Britain. Hello, welcome to the Capital City Bloodbath. The a 40k event. We've got to say it's 40k. We event. have to say it because then no one will listen if we don't. Yeah, if we don't. It's a it's a 40k event. Welcome to Tabletop Sports Network, T Sports Network, the home of Tabletop Sports. This is the Falcon. Ta -ta! And I am Rob, and we're here live, live in Ottawa, in Canada, and we're about to watch two exciting games of 40k while 112 other players try to compete to become the winner of the largest 40k event in Canada this year. Pretty exciting accolade, Pete. It is a pretty exciting accolade. And Capital City Bloodbath, um, it's named that for a reason. A lot of the top players in Canada are here today. The majority of Team Canada is here, except for Skari, who's in the chat, and that's because he decided to just stay in Europe for some reason. I mean, yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah, he, he wanted some really dry, bland food, and yeah, he thought, exactly. I'll stay here longer. A lot of blood in his sausage. That's all he wanted. Yeah, that's and, it, yeah. Uh, but, like, uh, the tables we've got for you today have some uh, uh, current and former uh, WTC players on board i see a lot of red jerseys out here in the crowd this is an exciting exciting time i'll have you know he's been having lovely food. <laughs> that's perfect i guess he has been only uh hanging out with celebrities yes that's true that's true that, that really does benefit him yeah. uh well so yeah loads of loads of exciting matches we've got an infield report of val he's going to be bringing you all the hot goss as the matches kind of like wind up or maybe even mid game as well which is fun we've got our space wolf check-in which space we now wolf check space wolf check-in which we're doing now uh which is really fun we've got some exciting matches we've got Knights, and then we've got Orcs versus Blood Angels. We'll talk about those in a little moment. Uh, our infield reporter is Tom. He's actually doing a little roam for us right now. Uh, so you can see... Oh, no, hold on. Give me a minute. There you go. So a little roam around the room now. You can see uh, that there's, there's some Ultramarines playing on that oh, table. Oh, that's the Space Wolves, my friend. Oh, that's the They're Space Wolves. That's the immediate bright. Space Wolf check-in. Thanks, yeah. Tom. Um, uh, give us a quick like little spin around the room. Uh, there we go. There's our Space Wolf man. There he is. Oh, he does look like a Space Wolf. He does. He is. Oh, he's playing someone from My Chemical Romance. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, that's really good to know. Uh, so there we go. This is Capital City Bloodbath. There you can see Ottawa. Huge gaming hall, carpeted, which is actually a real nice little feature. Everybody here loves that feature. Everyone like loves thing. that feature. Uh, that's really nice. And there you can see. So that's the event. All right, so thanks very much, Tom. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's talk about our first match. So this is Orcs versus Blood Angels. And in fact, our Blood Angels, who won the turn to go first, have already started to move. It's player place terrain, apart from the two pieces of terrain in the center. You've got Maxine versus, uh, with his Blood Angels versus Will with his Orcs. Pete, explain to me what the hell is happening. What's in the Blood Angels list? So this Blood Angels list is a little bit off the bog standard, um, uh, but it is pushing to what we're starting to see out of Blood Angels in, a, in an attempt to just eke a little bit more out of their pretty handsome secondary options. So what we see here, we've got, I believe this list is running 21 uh, Sanguinary Guard, three units of seven. He's also got uh, two large blocks of uh, Death Company. Um, and then I believe he has a third unit of Death Company that were in a... Um, in a drop pod. Which the drop pod has, like, the drop pod has just landed. The drop pod has just landed. Yep. And this is huge. You can see it there in the very center left of the board there between those two pieces of ruins. Um, this is really interesting. Uh, I thought drop pods were gone by the wayside. Although, actually, I know last year we saw, uh, for a little while, we saw a little bit of Death Watch drop pod in yeah. uh, being something that happened. Um, so, uh, yeah, like, what's happening? Is this common, the drop no, pod? No, drop pods are not something you see every day. Uh, sorry, he is, he is only running the two units of Death Company. Um, what, this is let, let, what this lets him do is um, it gets both squads of Death Company in Will's face turn one if he happens to go first. Mm -hmm. So he's able to pregame move one unit of uh, Death Company for... Um, for two CP if he wishes, or he can split the squad, and then he can pop the other one I I into the drop pod and, and drop them down. And you're seeing here, he's being a little bit cautious. Um, Will's list... Will's list is very much uh, a uh, heavy mech unit uh, of orcs, and they've got a ton of shooting. Yeah, should um, we just go through the list? Like, so the Blood Angels list, we've got... Blood you Angels say list, the two three big blocks of Sanguinary Guard, two big blocks of Death Company, one in a drop pod. Um, and so those are the, the, So am I right in thinking the Sanguinary Guard are much better than the Blood Company, or it's a case of they do different jobs? They do, they do the same jobs differently. Uh, Sanguinary Guard ha have that 2-plus armor, which is now a 1-plus because of Armor of Contempt, effectively. So th they survive very easily. Um, they, everything has a power weapon on them. They have a billion attacks. They're very good at killing elite things. Um, then we've got the uh, Death Company, which are uh, like uh, generally are going to be a, a throw them and forget them to toss that stuff out. Um, he's got three Eradicators that are going to be 
pretty clutch in this first uh, turn or two uh, in trying to pick up planes off of Will. Um, and then he's got just his backfield that are going to be um, his, in, his uh, incursors and intercessors that are going to hold everything in the back. Um, so he's definitely got like a back line. We call them campers. Yes. Yeah, like like bench warmers. They just sit at the back, do not much. Yeah. Uh, and then he's got that aggressive forward. And it looks like he's hitting a, like a wall of, of orc-based meat. A wall of orc-based meat. Um, so he, the Eradicators um, are no doubt tar trying to target prioritize those... Um, these two flyers we see at the bottom of the screen because the was bomb blaster jets, the was bomb blizzy bats <laughs> uh, with teleport and mega blasters. My favorite unit, I think, in 40k. The, it is the it is often the um, the slot machine of of disaster for uh, either the orc player or his opponents um, because these guys put out a ton of damage. They hit on threes. He's running them as speed freak, speed mob, um, which gives them a number of a little extra bonuses. Um, but they ca will cause no amount of grief for Maxim if they manage to get like their full shots off into something, um, because that's a lot of AP three shots he's going to be putting out. They hit damage three, I believe. Um, they can put a lot of hurt depending on how many shots he rolls, and uh, it's a it's a big bad booty day um, if they go off. Now it looks like the melt the melt is from the Eradicators only put. F six or seven wounds on one of the blasters. I think we seven. I think seven. seven we got seven from our um, was Rich. And that was really it for the Blood Angels turn. He Like, uh, the Blood Angels player really wanted to go second, I think, in this game uh, in particular. He wanted to get those buggies out in the open first so that he could get that uh, those first charges that he wants to do in turn one and really start tying stuff up. Um, and we're seeing Will. Something about Will, he is part of Team Canada. He played uh, Tyranids for Team Canada, and he is, I think, the most winningest uh, Canadian player right now. Oh, wow. Um, and at a GT level. He's something like 17-0 and 0 this year. Um, wow, that's incredible. So this is, Will, this is Will playing with the Orcs. Yeah, but, but he's been playing Tyranids all this time. He quick pivoted. Quick pivoted to Orcs because he's just kind of sick of Nids. He didn't have the best WTC. He kind of got thrown under the bus for a few of his games because that's how teams work. Mm. Uh, but here he is now, and he's having a great time with his Orcs. You can see he's shoving up to the middle right now um, with the um, with well, his boom, ba boom daka snaz wagons. Well, so he's got a variety of different buggies in he's here, right? So each, yeah. yeah, he's got three of each, so you can see them there in the center. So it does look like he's got uh, a mecha jet scrap jets there, uh, boom daka snaz wagons, and does he have? Yes, he has some uh, rocket truck squig bobby buggies on the right hand side. He's got the custom booster blasters, actually. The, oh, the, the the scrap jets and the uh, the rocket trucks. That's my bad. There's just they all have too many names. He's also got a, a bone breaker hanging out in the back. Um, to do some charge business and six def copters and um, the def copters for me in this list they are often the thing that's going to do the most damage that you're not expecting because um, you know they can fire and fade if he's made the evil sons but he went with freebooters to get the most out of their shots because because uh, freebooters either they lost their FAQ recently or they like lost it, they yes. lost it so now they're again able to shoot what like shoot unit and get plus one to hit with everything yes okay so that's actually huge yeah. Like, do you think that's helped Orcs have like a little bit of a comeback on what they're like looking to achieve? I don't really think so. I think this is like a real casual jank play by Will to to run the freebooters. What we've seen from Orcs is their most successful lists have still been Goffs because Gazgul Thraka is a beast, and with the the lowering of points on boys and on uh, Beast Naga boys and things like that, it's 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 given them. You know, a, a, a new lease on life in in terms of playing that way. Uh, but this is a way more fun way to play. Just many, many shots flying around the board as fast as you can. I love it. I mean, look, there's so much board space here. So as we can see on the far right-hand side as well, it looks like he's got some death company. So Maxime's put some death company uh, with, I think, another unit. I'm not quite sure what's behind there. Uh, is that even? Is that an, the other unit of Sanguinary Guard? Because he's got two on the left. So he's got one squad of Sanguinary Guard here by the looks of So players. that's the counterpunch unit, right? He's really yeah. baiting in anything, charging onto the into the death company in the center, and then he's going to attack back, I yep. think, is going to be the key. So oh, just so you guys can see what we're talking about, it's over on that right-hand corner there. Yes, right we'll, do a, we'll do a little bit of a zoom in so you can see. Uh, so this is this is a real trading situation in that kind of right-hand side, right? Yeah, for sure. So this these Sanguinary Guard are hoping that Will kind of takes the bait, comes in and kills these incursors. Um, and then they can pop out onto this objective and then kill whatever is probably going to hide in that building. Um, and then if we back up, we can see we've got this other squad of incursors kind of fully uh, hemmed in by the uh, Sanguinary Guard there. And then, yeah, we've got these 20 Death Company. Um, now, the Death Company, they can be a little more um, survivable than you'd think because they do have access to a 2CP stratagem uh, to give themselves a feel-no-pain uh, for the turn. Um, 
the Waz uh, Waz blah, blah, blah. the Waz bomb blaster jet, I believe, is AP three damage. Three. Yeah, no. Uh, so it, dep it, 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 it depends if he's uh, giving him the custom uh, blaster underneath. Yes. Um, uh, like, but we'll, we'll see the damage is. Uh, so just so that's our first. That's one of our games. Our other game, and as you can see, those planes already targeting that key unit, which is the Sanguinary Guard at the back left-hand corner there. So uh, pretty important that he's able to get it. Uh, our other game is Knights. That's right, Imperial Knights versus Chaos Knights. And actually, uh, we I'm pretty certain Imperial Knights got the first turn. I just get that double check from yeah that's yeah, absolutely they definitely correct did. so um so this will be ian with so ian with his chaos knights at the top he's got a huge collection of war dogs that's right uh, witness me is what he's going to be screaming <laughs> yep. as he goes through the game uh who watched the world burn and then um burton he's playing with his imperial knights now his imperial knights are beautiful uh he w won the turn to go first and i know that he's already through on his shooting phase um so uh we'll talk about that in a little moment um just so you can see how nice this army looks uh, so there's the war dogs uh pete is this common chaos knights and a load of war dogs yes chaos knights uh their most of their lists are going to be heavy war dog usually the lists that have been performing really well have been um 10 or 11 war dogs um with abaddon or with one big boy knight. But uh, Abaddon tends to be the favorite. Going pure war dogs is an interesting choice. Being house Vextrix, Vextrix is also interesting. Uh, that gives him uh, like a free reroll to uh, hit and to wound in the shooting phase for every one of these little boys. Um, and it lets him uh, take a warlord that's a little more survivable than you'd expect. So he's got a carnivore here with the warlord trait um, that lets him regen, uh, I believe it's uh, D3 wounds every turn. Uh, so he can be a little bit more aggressive with him if he needs to be. So, and so this is the Chaos Force. This is the Chaos Force, yeah. Yeah, we were just looking at the Imperial Force, but this is the Chaos War Dogs at the moment. Yeah, and then the Imperial Force here, this is kind of your your bog-standard competitive Imperial Knights list right now. Two big boy knights, either a, 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 a two Crusaders or a Crusader and a Paladin as House Tyrannus. And then uh, as many little Armagers and, um, uh, you know, the other guy And Armagers that you can take. Yeah. Um, So it looks like um, one of the baby one of the baby knights was killed, and then another one has been brought down to. So two just to be remaining. more specific, thanks, Rich. Love you to pieces. Just Imperial versus Chaos Knights because there's all they're yeah. all knights. So it's Imperial Knights still doing their shooting phase. Um, so this list, the Imperial Knights list, has a lot of damage potential. It has the the Imperial Knights combo um, of a House Tyrannus Knight um, that can change any one of its roles into a six. Um, there's a stratagem called Calculated Targeting where um, any sixes you roll to wound do mortal wounds for the amount of damage from your weapons instead of regular damage. So, like, if it goes off, you can do 20 to 30 mortals to something. Oh, so that tiny knight in the middle has just uh, saved himself, uh, just rolled three saves to save. Yeah. Uh, so how did he end up in the center? Like, because so Imperial not, Knights this, went first. This is the Imperial Knight. This is, so what, oh. um, what we're seeing here from Burton is he's playing, um, he's playing very casual. He, he definitely wanted to go second in this game because he's the shooty list and he wanted the, the dogs to come up. So all he's doing is he's putting one guy out to make sure he gets that middle objective to score his extra primary points because right. um, in this particular mission, you need that center objective to score primary, uh, this, the second primary. Um, and then what he's done with the rest is he's just got them backlined and he's laying down fire into whatever he has range on. Um, this list also has a bastard helm on one of the armagers, which means two of the armagers in this list get plus one to wound with all their shooting. Oh, nice. Um, and that's going to come in really key. In the, Is it strength mirror. seven on their guns? It's I'm strength seven. So against these little boy knights, he's going to be wounding on twos or threes, depending on which ones he's shooting into, I believe. Um, and there's no big boy knights for him to really worry about. So, like... This is this is an interesting matchup. Like, what do you, like what do you do? Do you just do you just yeet all of your war dogs into the front? Like, is this a game of like angles? We're seeing a laser pointer, yeah. so it feels like it must be a bit for it's for both of them. It's a game of angles. Like the war the the um, the war dogs are going to really have to play. Uh, I hate to use the word, but cagey. Okay, uh, why do you hate to use the word? Uh, it's just a word that everybody uses, and it's just it's 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 so overdone. Oh, okay. But Apologies. Anyway, okay. Uh, Okay. Oh, wow. So we just got word that that Chaos War Dog survived. So this is the one in the, the top right-hand center. This one here that's down to two wounds. He yep. survived all of the shoot. Oh, no. It's the one in the middle. Yeah. 
The little guy. I, th- I, yeah, I, no, I, he must. He, he means this one. It's the one with the dice. The, he, by middle, he means back middle. Yeah, yeah, back middle. Top middle. Richard yeah. is all over the place over here, guys. Really sorry. He's doing he great. Know no, you're about. doing great, Richard. Don't get put off. You're giving us loads of info. Love it. Yeah, yeah, Weird great Weird AOS job. game. Exactly, Moon Tyranid. AOS yeah. isn't, isn't real. Uh, it is Moon Tyranid. That's correct. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Monty Raid is what I call him, though. Um, okay, yeah, so so Imperial Knight's going first, so that's what's happening. War Dogs yeah. haven't gone yet. So that's what my question You think that they're going to move out cagely, but look at this no man's land, like, on the left-hand exactly. side. Like, so player placed in the center, and then, um, like, there's a lot of no man's land here. Yes. Like, do you think there's enough output for the War Dogs? Oh, the baby knight did Finally die. Died. So we lost our first War Dog. And um, another one has been wounded in this corner, but I don't think there's much else that has rain has uh, access to him. So. This feels super rough for Ian and the Chaos Knights. Like, where does he put all of his units that he isn't going to get just slammed by this shooting? Um, honestly, I don't know. Oh, okay. All I right. So, do, so do you know. think this is a situation? Because I know player place terrain has become like uh, fairly common in NA. Yes. Um, fairly common with with CCBB doing that. The two centerpieces are. Uh, deployed by uh, the the TOs effectively and everything yes. else by some th- someone else, so it kind of stops the, the, the that game in the middle. What do you think? Like, what do you think in this particular matchup? Because it looks pretty rough. Like, nowhere to move those knights. Like, the one thing I probably would have done differently on the Chaos Knight side, if and like I don't know, we didn't watch exactly how each piece was placed. Although it was fully recorded. Uh, yeah. So pe- other people can. Yeah. Uh, but um, this particular piece, if I had the option, I would have shoved. I would have shoved it up further. I would have definitely made sure that it was a that it was a little closer to the other side. Oh, so we just lost another one of our war dogs. That's two war dogs gone down now for no return at the minute. So that was the one that was in the corner um, that we just. Uh, yeah, it was this one. There must have. Uh, the, we can't really see this corner here. There must be another war, uh, another armager that had a line of sight. Maybe the bastard helm one. So he's getting some bonuses. Um, yeah, it's, this is a really going to be a hard matchup for these Chaos Knights just based off of, like, this this big space, which is what I was trying to say. Like, if this piece was a little bit farther up, I'd say they'd have a little bit better of a chance because there are uh, a lot of close combat dogs here that can run up and, and start to make a mess of these armagers, but... Yeah, uh, of course. So that, that's pretty interesting. Like, I think... Um uh, what's what's with the indoor hat craze? It's really just Rob. Rob started a thing. <laughs> There's two people with hats here. That's all there is. That's all that's going on. That's it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so those are those are our two matches. Pretty exciting. So time to talk about. It. So table one, uh, and we've seen the orcs move into the blood angels now, and then chaos knights versus imperial knights. Chat. Time to let us know what you're thinking. And Falcon. Time for me. Like. Again, you know I'm not the 40k expert. I'm here to ask the questions. Sure, sure. It feels like this Imperial Knight versus Chaos Knights, I'm not really certain what. I'm not really certain what we can see being done by the Chaos Knights. I feel like they're going to walk into the midboard and die. I feel like that's what they have to do, but they can do it. And, like, a lot of it's going to come down to turn two. How fast are they going to push up? How how aggressive are they going to be? Um, and, And, like, this guy, he's being sent to his death. It's a gorgeous model, but really, like, what I, what I think is going to have to happen is we're going to see, like, a, a very quick collapse of as many war dogs as possible into the we, center And we've ruin. lost two already. Yeah. Two so of, there's, there's was, 12 left. I believe there's 14 There in was 14 list. initially, so, so two already gone. So still 12 boys, and you can probably slam five of them in here real quick and then hope that by getting the right angles, you're only losing a couple a turn, and you can start banging up the primary and kill as many armagers as you can. Leave, leave the big boys, because they're, like, you don't have the strength to deal with them early. No, yeah, okay. I think this, is, I think this honestly, is a very interesting match. Uh, so this one on table two. Uh, and now uh, on table one, uh, and as Thomas pointed out in the chat, um, we've seen the orcs kind of make their first turn play. So we've seen the two... So we, so we, and we're in the orc shooting phase. Blood Angels first turn. Uh, we took two units of big Sanguinary Guard over on the left hand side with some intercessors, and then in the middle we had two units of Death Company. One of which is yes. slowly dying. Yeah. Um. Uh. And so it looks like as many buggies as possible are coming into this Death Company squad. Um. The I'm assuming it was the jump packs because they put the drop the drop pods here. 
Um, we're getting word that the sh the orc shooting has been doing exactly what it sometimes does, which is whiff miserably. Tom mentioned in the chat he's wondering if it would have been better to put the Waz bombs into the other corner where there was only the one Sanguinary Guard Squad. I do think that's the better play um, because if you clear these Sanguinary Guard, um, there's no real clapback from the Blood Angels into these these bombers, and then they can pivot and come this way after that. By putting them up here, um, you're really hoping that the, that the slot machine goes in your favor, like I mentioned, and then you, you roll big. That's interesting. So what you're saying is resource management, he should have... So this is, the, this is what we've got on the kind of right, top right-hand side here. Um, you really feel like the was bomb shouldn't have been in here, and instead, having the movement should have been over in this far left-hand side. And I think that's kind of interesting in, in dealing with those sanguinary guard in the top right, uh, because then... Effectively, then there's, they've got they've got no retort. No, there's nothing that, like if these sanguinary guard are dead, or there's only like one of them left. Um, these bombs, these was bombs, are free next turn to then co uh, like collapse into the middle. Then you probably lose them, but yeah. you've now had two full two full turns of destroying your opponent instead of what may just be one. Um, yeah, the game the game just just won instantly. It, it's I mean I wouldn't go that far, Tom, but you're you're I, you're right. Like that is the better play in my opinion. But Will's been playing for a long time. Uh, he might have a, a plan, or maybe he just got a little tunnel visioned by there being so much stuff here, and he that's where he just wanted to go play. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, ultimately, like, so, so what we're really talking about is like dealing with threats and board presence. Those two yes. kind of like, y you're always trying to like pull a couple of different levers when you're playing any tabletop war game, right? And one of those things is uh, like, if you can dominate the board presence and kill what you can kill. There's a lot of snapback here, but maybe also if we think about what Will's done is while the planes, while, while the planes are a real problem. Uh, what we're also what we're also going to see um, is that very much like we saw in the last game, uh, this means that Maxime's got lots of lots of places to go with his army, mm -hmm. um, now, and whatever whatever happens. Now we've now from what we're being told, seven Death Company have been picked up so far from from the shooting of the um, the buggies. Um, can we get a look at secondaries? Did Maxim yeah, pick no the problem. Death Company secondary? I can, I can take, uh, take you right now. So these are the secondaries he we've got. He did not. Okay. Ma so Maxim's got Bring It Down, Pete. I'm going to go through them and you tell me what they are. Bring Maxime's It Down, Kill yeah. Vehicles. There's a lot of vehicles. It's a good choice. Perfect. Oath of the Moment. Kill stuff and stay in the center of the board. He wants to do both of those things. It's not a terrible choice. I, I think there's better picks uh, now for Space Marine factions, but... Yeah, because it was nerfed quite a bit in Nephilim, but it's doing what he wants to do. So if he's just looking for like easy points, he doesn't have to think about. Not a terrible option. Engage on all fronts. Be everywhere all the time. He's a fast army. I like Relentless Assault a little bit better, even into this orc list, um, where you tr try to be uh, try to have more units in your opponent's deployment zone than he has in yours. It would suck for turn one, but then after that, you're often in a good spot. It's hard to say because this is a very fast list. He is um, not getting into that middle. Like I know the Sanguinary Guard are good, but like surely, like he's just done now. He's just pinned into that back corner. It's, it's is he? Is isn't he? he? It really depends. It depends on on uh, where his uh, what he what he decides to do. He either explodes into the middle and ignores the Waz bombs. He has to. Or he kills the Waz bombs. Both are, are solid options here. But then he like, gives up on Oath of the Moment, right? Yeah, you're right. And uh, so like, he does have four, like basically 14 Sanguinary Guard that can go here, and one unit of Sanguinary Guard is easily going to pick up a Waz bomb. Um, and then he also has these three Eradicators that haven't taken anything. We'll have to see once the shooting phase is done what actually happens to them. But the three Eradicators should pick up the other Waz bomb. Um, and yeah, I don't think he's in that bad a spot. It really depends on if he manages to pick up all 20 Death Company in the middle or if he only gets one squad um, as to how Will feels about this turn. So this is this is Orc's first turn with Blood Angels already having had their first yeah. turn. So that's what we're currently looking at. So just going through the shooting phase and I, we might see some charges as well. We'll kind of talk about that in a moment. That looks pretty good. Uh, talking about the secondaries though, uh, for the Orcs, we've got no prisoners, Pete. That's uh, you. You score as ma you score as many points as you do wounds divided by ten. So w Space Marines often have 140, 150 wounds on the board. So it, if so, uh, Will's thinking like if he manages to table him, he'll get 12 or 13 points. Okay. Um, uh, get to good bits. So this is an orc specific uh, secondary uh, in, in, where he just has to be on objectives uh, with his orc boys. It's pretty easy to get. It's one of the better orc objectives. Um, and then what's his final one? And his final one was also is uh, engage. engage on all fronts. Be everywhere about. all yeah. the time. 
Okay, all right, well, we love that. Um, okay, fantastic. If you just joined us, by the way, thanks for tuning in. This is Capital City Bloodbath uh, 2022. This is a 120 person, roughly, uh, 40K event here in Ottawa in Canada. Uh, some pretty major names here from the Canadian scene playing. Um, and uh, I'm j the Falcon is my co-commentator. Um, my name's Rob, uh, and we're going to be bringing you these two really exciting matches. Uh, so this is our first one. We're at the bottom of turn one. Uh, Orcs have had their turn. Uh, we can, I think the Orcs are just finishing up now. Let's have a, we might be able to listen in. Let's see if it works. Let's see if it works this time. Oh, that's pretty good. 10, 20 shots. How many death company are left? 12, 18, 20. For fours for these. Not that it made much fucking difference. And threes are rolling ones. On the same squad? The same squad. Okay. Yeah. Seven AP three two damage. Oh, five. Got him just barely. Yeah. I'll take that. Shot, 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 shot. I'll chuck these guys. That on the uh, red skater? Yeah, on these guys. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to chuck them here, actually. 18, 4, 8, 16. 24 shots at those last two death company. Okay. 6, 9, 12, 15, 16, 17, 21, 24 for fives. No rerolls for them to wound. And threes, AP1. Six AP1 on those death company. Okay. Six. Six three plus. No. Okay. Take yeah. a wound. Well, feel no pain, right? And uh, not on the red skater. No, no, this is, I changed oh, the death company. The death company, okay. No. Nope. So kill the wounded guy. All that's left is my planes. So we've still Finally. got the we've still got the planes so to go the there, Pete. To hit, so, good. so what we've seen is Will actually killed 19 of the 20 Death Company that were in the middle of the board with the buggies. That's incredible, right? Because because they're two wounds apiece. They're so two wounds apiece. They have a six plus feel no pain. They're sitting on a, a two or a three up armor save, depending on where they were against most of those shots. Um, yeah, and. I would just have to assume that he didn't bother popping the 2CP for the Feel No Pain. Maybe he didn't have it at the beginning of the game because of his pregame spending. Um, so, yeah, so these flyers are definitely going to, if I were, like, he's going to probably split fire. I, I think he'd want those Eradicators dead. Knowing that he killed 19, that's massive. That's, um, like, that much force into that middle board is not good for Maxim. Like, he wanted at least one of, I thought he'd kill maybe 10. Uh, killing almost 20 is huge and still having the blaster jets to go like oh, he's, we haven't even seen them swing yet as far we as haven't I know, even the seen the them shoot just have not even rolled it like uh, uh dickie had mentioned that they'd already shot but i think it was something else because like they're already like he's looking at rolling more this dice. this could genuinely be ladies and gentlemen a whitewash T excited to see talking about whitewash uh we're going to go over to our man in the field mr val heffelfinger uh, and he's going to tell you what's happening at the rest of capital city bloodbath over to him right now Not just our man in the field, your man in the field, your very own Val Haffelfinger. This is a Co-Jam production between the Table Sports Network and your and the, uh, oh yeah, Frontline Gaming Network. That's the one I'm on usually. Anyway, we're here at Capital City Bloodbath, as you well know. Behind me, we of course have the people's champion, Connor Makarucha, playing his Space Wolves into some chaos again this, turn, this, this round. We're gonna see how it goes. Abaddon the Despoiler showing up as if Mortarian himself wasn't enough. Now, if we just keep going a little bit down, down the row here, in the background, off there in the distance, on this table, large, red, also green, it is a gargantuan squiggeth, everybody. Perhaps the finest model in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, and rarely seen in these parts. Some thought the gargantuan squiggeth was in fact extinct. Not so, says Justin Curtis. 
podcaster perhaps still, maybe, I don't know, I haven't heard in a long time from the Drunken Dreadnoughts. Regardless, uh, these guys are having a real cool big monster throwdown. And you know what? The round's been going on for more than a few minutes, and uh, the big squig, still alive. Is it because they don't care and they haven't killed it? I don't know, but I'm just happy to see the fella here. So why don't we just keep on coming down the row, and I'll remind everyone in chat, I think now Twitch and YouTube both have access to the exclamation point other games command, which should bring up a link to a Word doc that I'm updating when I wander around here with scores. I take photos of Dustin Henshaw's GSC score, and I put it on there because he doesn't use ITC battles, so it would look nice. Um, and then there's also other ones. There's Sam uh, Procopio we're following, uh, the Blood Angels Beefcake. You can see all of his uh, intense details and training regime by using the ITC Battles app. Also, Jeremy Atkinson, crowd favorite around these parts, requested by the big bird falcon himself. Uh, his, uh, his game is being tracked by the ITC Battles app that you can access by going exclamation point. Other games, I'm pretty sure. So that's it from uh, this quick wrap up. I'm going to try and get some interviews later as the, as the, as the round goes on. I'm going to try and get you the information you need. And remember, you can always pay me money to do stuff. Back to you, Robin. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Heffelfinger. So big news, so, big news. Yeah, we're on table two. So this is Chaos Knights being run by Ian, and uh, Burton is running these Imperial Knights. The Imperial Knights went first. We saw them shoot two of the 14 War Dogs. They're up against Down. Now we're into turn one for the Chaos Knights. And Pete, what's happened? So, um... I didn't think this would be possible with that Warlord having a 4 plus invuln and all that other beautiful stuff, but um, Ian's Chaos Knights came around this corner and uh, Burton had his big boy knight sticking just a little too far out this side so he could get angles himself and disappeared. Wow. Disappeared from just war dog shooting. Just uh, war dog shooting. That's pretty big punch turn one. That's massive for Ian, being able to kill that big boy. Now, Burton does take two Crusaders specifically so that he does have a backup plan if, it, if one of them goes down early. But losing your Warlord that early is, is massive, massive news for the Chaos Knight player. It definitely puts Burton back on the back foot because now he's outnumbered. Uh, it, it's a quick turnaround. It's... This, is, this might become a game. It's going to be a fast game one way or another, but um, this is, this is going to be brutal. Yeah, we talked about, we talked about how, uh, how difficult it would be for those war dogs to move into the center. But if there's nothing shoot back at them when they're in the <laughs> center, then they're in a super okay place. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, and I really, like, I really like how he split up um, the different units to try and like, try to mitigate where some of those lines of fire may come in across yeah. the board. Like, so that's quite nice, like, while also giving himself a bunch of options. At the end of the day, those war dogs are fast enough uh, that they can get around some of those kind of angles. And there's some real good, clear lines of fire. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the Chaos Knights uh, are uh, going first. Uh, sorry, sorry, Chaos Knights are going second in turn one. And, uh, and, and this, is the, this is the matchup. That's pretty huge. So what's the retort going to be from the Imperial Knights? Um, what do you think? Well, uh, now that the Chaos Knights are out in the open, he's not hiding behind anything. He's not going to have to worry so much about angles uh, so badly. He's going to be able to get the, this, his other big boy knight out. He's going to have to pop calculated targeting and see, split some fire. If he can pick up... I think a big thing will be if the Bastard Helm also survives this turn. Uh, if I could find out where the Bastard Helm is on this table, that would be super nice. I'm assuming he's also in this bottom corner. Uh, because that will mean that at least two of those armagers are going to be fighting, uh, are going to be shooting at a little bit more potential than the rest of the list. Um, because he's going to need to clear a flank here. He's going to need to clear three or four of these dogs. Um, yeah, he's going to he's going to need to clear as many as possible uh, f from them. Because like he, he only killed two last turn. I don't he know if only, he's going to have the output now. He only especially if he lost the warlord. Yeah. Okay. So. So yeah. So this knight here has the bastard helm. That's good. Uh, still good news there. Because if he can pick up one side and collapse a flank, uh, that will it'll make this more so of a game. The, what does the Bastard Helm do? Bastard Helm, it, it gives a war, an Armager a Bondsman ability where he himself gets uh, plus one to wound with uh, any of his attacks, um, and he can give that to one other um, Armager Knight that's within six inches of him. So he basically has two uh, Armagers that get that plus one to wound. He's, so he's 
he's just that much more capable of dropping these these little baby knights and it should help him at least clear off this angle if he wants to and then and then kind of shove up and make this more of a dawn of war play if he really really wants to go that route Interesting. Okay, interesting. Right, so if we just jump back to... So that's where we are now with the Imperial Knights about to take their first turn back. Wow, the Bastion just got shot into, though, because we're not at the end of the Wardog shooting for Chaos Knights, and everything you just talked about, Pete, is held on by one wound. Yeah, like, he's Bastion clinging to life. To one wound. Yeah. This is not good for Imperial Knights. I feel like there was some kind of deployment problem here for the Imperial Knights to, to even leave that as an option. You think, you, think, you, you think this is a super tough position for them to be in? If he loses... Uh, like two of the like bigger parts of um, of his list in terms of damage output, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the bit that I'm most excited about, I think, has got to be uh, this uh, war dog via um, uh, <laughs> armager fight in the in little the middle. middle. Yeah. Like, that's just cute. That's just cute. They're like, oh, we'll let the big guys shoot at each other. Yeah, we're just gonna, gonna come in here and hug. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're best friends. <laughs> yeah. They remember each other from a, a bygone era. Yeah, well, let's get a headbutt is what they're gonna yeah. do, I think. Uh, so yeah, table two looking very, very spicy for Chaos Knights. So we did learn some stuff about table one, if we go back there very quickly. Um, at the break, we were talking to Dickie to get a full breakdown of how. Wow. About oh, how this oh happened. yeah. So just table two, the bastard helm. The bastard helm has gone down right as well. Here has been removed. Wow. That's real bad for Imperial Knights. Like, I mean, he still has a game. Uh, that that one Knight Crusader can put in a lot of work, but he's going to force him to do it. Um, Oof, I just, I want, like, that feels like a mistake. I don't, I don't know. I feel like if he's got the output to bring down the other Crusader and the Bastard Helm Oh, he guy, definitely does for sure. Like, <laughs> like well, No, what I mean is, is yeah. like, no matter what, no matter what we saw see Burton do in his turn, he's just going to, he's going to then lose all those pieces again. And there's some he's, really good board uh, board uh, presence from um, from Ian and the Chaos Knights as well. Like, he's really dominated that board in a nice way. Like, he's going to have to get really aggressive with that Crusader. Yeah, so they're not gonna. He's not gonna do any charges. I mean, these are two shooty armagers looking at each other. <laughs> uh, pistols at dawn. Pistols at dawn. Yeah. So like this crusader's gonna have to come out to play. Like he's gonna have to be aggressive with them. He's gonna have to shove them up, and he's gonna have to use them in close combat as well as in shooting. Uh, in my opinion, if he's gonna try to turn any of this back, but that puts him in range of all this stuff up here. Um, oof, that does not look good for the Imperial Knights. Losing those two big pieces in this army. No, no, it does not. Okay, table one. Uh, and so just to keep everyone updated what happened, first turn was taken by Blood Angels. We saw 20 Death Company move into the center board. We saw two units of Sanguinary Guard, some intercessors on the left, and another unit of Sanguinary Guard on the far right-hand side. And we also saw a unit of, um, I think, w were they intercessors that we saw hold that back, that side right objective? Yeah. Um, yeah, so there was some... No, incursors, sorry. Sorry, yeah. incursors, sorry. Uh, so some incursors holding it. Um, and then uh, the uh, and then we had the orcs slap back and Pete. What happened by the orcs with the orcs slapping back? So we were trying to like we had kind of talked about how these was bombs we felt would have been better placed up here to deal with this unit. Um, but what we didn't account for was that Will Paul rolls like a champion and Maxim does not. Um, so we were trying to figure out how 19 uh, Death Company would have would have died in the way they did, and the was bombs still had not shot. And the reason why they died so quickly is because uh, Will did uh, about 20-some-odd wounds with just the rivet cannons um, on the booster blasters. Okay. So the booster blasters, they hit on fours. Um, they're strength 7, AP 2, 2 damage flat. He's shooting into a unit that's uh, in cover, so they're going to have a 4-up save, and they're going to have a 6-up feel no pain, possibly a 5-up if he wants to spend the 2 CP Maxim. Maxim didn't bother because he didn't think it would be that big of an issue, and uh, 15 Death Company were picked up from just those three uh, buggies shooting. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah. Like, absolutely unbelievable stuff. Um, and, like, and, the, and the board state is just genuinely amazing. Thanks, Tom, for the lovely shots. I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, the board state is just super good. So there's only Sangre Regal on the right-hand side, We've lost a huge portion of the units on the left-hand side as well from that bolt of fire, uh, from the uh, the was bombs as well. It looks like they only lost two, maybe three sanguinary guard because we can see about four of them, four of them hanging out here. There might be more hiding if we can get a. Uh, Tom's going to go over and do a little investigate for us. I'm yeah, pretty certain. He's just busy, busy hanging out with Dicky. Uh, but I mean, if, if there's eleven sanguinary guard here, it, that is fine. We're seeing. Don't uh, listen to us. We're seeing the Death Company captain come out to play. So this Death Company captain, he's got Imperium Sword, he's got a Thunder Hammer. Um, he's gonna be, he's like, he's gonna, he's expecting a lot from him to go in solo against these buggies, but he should be able to pick up 
one or two of them at the very least uh, when he charges in. Yeah, so yeah. so we've seen that move, yeah, that unit, unit move right now, but then, there's seven in this unit in the far right hand side. So far right, there were seven, and then uh, I'm really more interested in this in the other one, the one that used to have 14. How many wa how many were picked up by the was bomb? Yeah, how many were picked up by the was bomb? So this is kind of in that far left. Uh, oh, sorry, no, to you, bottom left. I've just yeah, realized. Yeah, one you're looking at right now, I believe. There, t there should be two units. Uh, there should be three units in total on the board, unless there a lot were killed. So. Okay, so <laughs> he did pick up six. That's okay. that's huge. He lost so he lost twenty death company. He lost, well, all, he lost nineteen death company. Nineteen death company. Uh, he lost four of seven. No, no, six of seven. No, yeah, six, yeah, of, six seven of seven. Sanguinary guard. Yeah. He's got one unit of sanguinary guard left and another unit of sanguinary guard, which was just seen move onto the far top right hand corner. Uh, sorry, right hand objective, not top right yeah. hand objective, and they're going to be charging in there as well. And absolutely no, nothing to say to all of the uh, buggies in the middle. No, I mean. Like, this is going to be his, like, his decision point, Maxim. Like, is he going to leave the Waz bombs now because he has to? Um, and that's what he, I'm pretty sure he's going to And I mean, out. then he's in the, the great, Will's in a great place. Will's just going to fly them over into the right hand objective yeah, and start dealing with those sanguinary guards. there guard. and deal with these unless, unless he can wrap and trap, and then Will can just fall back if he really needs to. I am amazed by the output. Uh, do you think this is just a dice situation? It just rolled. It just did well, not go well. Be. To have three custom booster blasters kill 14 or 15 death company, like that's, that's not math in any situation. Yeah. Custom booster blasters are hitting on fours, um, and, you know, they're wounding on threes. He's still going to have a four-up save against most of those shots, plus a feel no pain. Um, yeah, it's it's a weird, weird thing to have that many die. Like usually, your math, you kill five or six, but then you have all those other buggies. You probably you probably kill both squads if you put like your whole army into both squads, and that's if Maxim decides to spend some resources uh, once he realizes what's happening. Um, and I don't, and he didn't. He didn't spend any because he just he didn't assume that the damage output would be that great. Yeah, no, it was it, it, amazing. Like I, like, I was really expecting some sort of, like, you know, mid-board kind of game where we saw the units kind of hide, then fly over, because they've yep. all obviously got the fly keyword, do some charges. Like, very much like we see the Death Company in the kind of left-hand side now, but uh, not Death Company, sorry, Sanguinary Guard. So you can see they've moved into this kind of, like, absolute wall of Orc Castle. But... I'm like, what are you going to do? Like, you're pretty good. I get it. You're the chosen ones. Yeah. Yeah. I, like, I understand you're covered in plate gold armor. I don't know if that's enough. No, I don't Because there isn't many of them. Not anymore. Like, and the law is, is like, uh, is that this, the armor is like um, left on the battlefield. Like, and the, like, there's, they don't make any new armor. No. So like, it's like replicated, not replicated, it's like repaired. And like, ne they're never getting this armor back. Them orcs are sticking them right on top of a Gretchen's head. Oh yeah, 100%. These are now Gretchen hats. Uh, that should be what we call this army going forward. Yeah, the Gretchen Hats. army is now Gretchen Hats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, unbelievable. So, like, I do not... I do, what does everyone in the chat think? That's the real question. Like, uh, let's tune into the players, because, like, surely... Let's tune in right now, it's see how the players It's just being depressed, for sure. Uh, got to be. For reasons? Yeah. Fine. Oh, a bit quiet on there. four. Three rolling. So this has got to be this has got to be the charge in on the left hand side. This is shooting. Trying to good. will his dice into doing something. Five. Thanks, five. Nogle Matthew, for telling us the sound is good. Love you, bud. Three wound minus two, minus two. Uh, so they advance to five up in vol. You kill a bike. That one in particular. Fuck that guy. <laughs> 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 Didn't enjoy that bike. That's what he just said. Oh, his Inferno <laughs> pistol. Okay. And the uh, bolter. There's the a guy at one wound, just so you know. Okay, I will start with the bolter. Okay. So four shot. On five. Nothing. Pistol. Hit. Are they minus one to it? No, two? not this time. Okay. No, Wound. Uh, five up in ball. Nope. He's got one wound left. So he's just, does he explode? Just no. Constant wail of shots there, Pete. What do you think? It just, yeah. Shoot, shoot. Just, just like shoot, minor shoot. shooting here from the Sanguinary uh, Guard. Grenade. Inferno pistol there that finally picked up one buggy. Grenade. Um, 
Now we're seeing crack grenades go nope. out from that like one remaining uh, Death Company guy by the sounds of things. This is, the Blood Angels are light on resources now, and they've <laughs> got to do a lot of work. He's got like he's he sent. Um, it looks like this. Is that the solo Sanguinary Guard? And I imagine Sorry, Dante's up there because I don't see Dante on the board anywhere. More for your benefit than mine. Uh, to try and deal with these Waz bombs. He's got this. He's got these uh, big block of yeah. Ball, so Dante's yeah. up there. He's got this block of seven here to deal with. Um, so the injured bolt gun would go. One are those there. bikes or the, are those uh, choppers yes, we're looking yeah. at here in that ruin one, there? Two, three. So over in that bottom right hand three corner, there. ruin. So one there, three there. Sure. So there we go. There we go. We've got a unit of bikes. I'm pretty certain. Looks like bikes. Yeah, it's hard to tell uh, the way we'll kind of uh, model these guys sometimes. And if we go back up, yes. So there's something uh, like that surprised me about what uh, how Maxim started this game, and that is, and it might just be a CP thing because now down uh, is um, he's got these big blocks of Death Company. He went first. He's going up against a ton of vehicles. He does have the option to pregame move twelve, move twelve again, charge. Yes. So twenty four inches. So he's across the board. And and these Death Company with the they have three or four thunder hammers in the unit. Um, they're big bad boys. He does have an option if he strings them out to have Dante give them chapter master rerolls. Mm. Um, I'm just curious as to why he didn't do that. Yeah, I don't know either. Like, I don't, I, yeah, I don't know because like, I, I, maybe he felt like he, the train was in a good place where he felt like he could like bump into places he wanted to go. Yeah. Maybe he didn't want to yeet the whole army forward. Maybe he felt like the Death Company were going to be able to take more of that damage in the middle, and then he could counter charge. Sure, like he definitely felt like he could take more than he did. Yes. Because there's no, like, the math wasn't good for him there. Um, but that being said, like, that just, almost any Blood Angel player looking at that is going to be like, this is what I want. You have given me my fruit, uh, yeah, all yeah. of these things to crack open and feed upon, and there's nothing inside to worry about. Um, so, yeah, it's a curious play to start it that way. But we're seeing Dante and that one remaining Sanguinary Guard going into one of the Waz bombs. Hopefully they can finish it off. I believe that's the one that's already been damaged by the Eradicators. Um, we've I got. Mean, he's still got the eradicators on the board. Like, there's, there's still resources. Uh, I don't. Does he? Does he have the eradicators? We'll double check. No, he does not. No, they're, they're dead. Gone. They I, were eradicated. I, I believe one of the was bombs must have picked them up. Um, yeah. But yeah, like he's got wow, this one. So he, he, he also lost the eradicators. That's crazy. So he's got this one death company with a thunder hammer, and he's got this ca uh, death company captain with a thunder hammer. Like they'll do some work. They'll probably finish off the squad of two bikes, uh, two uh, buggies. Um, which would mean these Sanguinary Guard can f kind of... He's probably going to split charge and hit these buggies and the bikes, try to finish off the bikes and take a few wounds off these buggies. Like, he's he's splitting a lot of his damage potential just to make this, this kind of become a game. Yeah, he has to. I don't know. The right flank seems quite strong. We'll see how this ends up. Uh, so just And just for everyone, very quickly, we've got a game on table two where the Imperial Knights are taking their second turn <gasps> and they're pushing and they're pushing into the mid board uh, to try and take out this, what, what originally started out as 14 War Dogs. While this is all going on, we do have a man in the field, Mr. Val Heffelfinger, and we're gonna ju and we're gonna jump over to him right now, and we're gonna find out what's happening at the rest of Capital City Bloodbath. Where's the other big boy, Knight? You're live. Oh, I'm live. <laughs> I'll tell you who's live. Val Heffelfinger's live. I'm putting on the, the glasses. Very important. I can't show my eyes. Uh, it's, a, it's a style thing. You know, it wouldn't be a bloodbath if it was only one. Uh, thing going on here, uh, just 40k. We actually have multiple game systems being played. As a matter of fact, to my left here, we have the infamous Michael Grove, he used to play a little bit of the 40k, he's playing something called Age of Sigmar, uh, apparently an alternative uh, game you can play from our friends at Games Workshop, PLC. But over here, we have some other cooler game systems. I said we have a song of ice and fire, uh, based on the good seasons of uh, that HBO show. But seriously, it looks great. We've got, we've got some people who come out for that today. If we keep going down a little bit. Now, this may not look like much right now. But if you, if, 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 if uh, Tom, if you were to pan, and if the audience can just imagine tomorrow what this might be. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the future location of a 6th edition Warmer Fantasy Tournament. It might look, it might look exactly the same tomorrow. I'm not sure that anyone's actually coming, but I'll tell you, the tables already are the players. If we keep going down a little bit uh, past this soon-to-be hallowed ground, we're going to see a lot more AOS, but we're going to come up on something called Frostgrave? 
Frostblade? I'd never even heard of it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, well, it's not Frost Wave. It's Frost Glaive. Free Blade. It's Free Blade. It's Free Blade. And oh my goodness. A, a live sighting. I have not seen these gentlemen in a long time. Former members of the Basement Collective playing Free Blade. And then if we keep coming down, I think at the very end here, we have a real life sighting of X Wing, the uh, collectible little spaceship game. So that's pretty cool to me. I know this has been just a scintillating update. I hope the boys took their, their opportunity to go pee. Uh, at least one of them has. Um, and uh, I think what we'll do is we'll pass it back to the booth, and uh, I'll come to you live next, maybe, from the garage sale. Thank you very much uh, to Tom and Val there for bringing us all the information um, around the room. Oh, some AOS tables. I could, have, I could have done live commentary from the AOS tables at the same time. However, however, we're back on this table two. So to catch you up, we're covering two games. We're covering Blood Angels versus Orcs. It's looking really good for Orcs at the minute, but Blood Angels are trying to fight back. They're doing the snapback, as I think it's technically called. However, on table two, we've got this really exciting match between Burton and Ian. Ian's running his Chaos Knights, and Burton is running his Imperial Knights. Now, what happened in the first turn is uh, the Chaos Knights kind of moved, uh, sorry, the Imperial Knights moved into the center. Uh, we had one of our uh, Armagers move in the center, and they managed to kill two of the 14 War Dogs. However, in the slap back from him, coming from the Chaos War Dogs, it was crazy. We lost a Night Crusader. We lost uh, our Warlord as well, who was an Armager of all things. Uh, no, so the, the uh, Crusader was the Warlord. Um, and he, he was killed uh, to all of the melta shooting and auto cannons that are in this war dog list, um, which was not expected. Burton was, was, did not think that would happen. He did poke him out just a little bit too far here at this bottom ruin, uh, which let all the, uh, the war dogs even up in this top have uh, like a little bit of line of sight to, to pick him off and get some and get some air. And then there were two war dogs remaining that managed to pick off um, the bondsman uh, armager. His basically his one of his other uh, units that had a relic, uh, a very important relic for this list, the the bastard's helm, which gives plus one to wound to, to two of the armagers in the list. Um, Burton in the slapback, he did manage to pick up two more uh, war dogs in shooting, and then he brought in another close combat dog um, uh, to the center. And they killed uh, the war dog that um, Ian had brought up to. to, to <laughs> really, uh, he killed the war dog as well. He killed the war dog in That's the middle, amazing. so he managed to pick up three more war dogs. Uh, so there's nine, I believe, now remaining for chaos, or it might be down to eight. Um, and uh, and Burton feels a little bit better. Uh, yeah, so there's so there should be nine war dogs remaining. Burton feels a little bit better about that. He was hoping to kill one more war dog. He was hoping to. To at least bring him down. Uh, this is a four. fascinating match of attrition and resources. Yeah. Like just like literally, big guns never tire. But in this case, they one side will eventually tire. The what uh, and really all Ian's trying to do now is kind of line this up to take the middle. As you can see, he's he's popping on every objective that he can, and he's going to put as much firepower into that final crusader because that crus if that crusader dies, like Burton ha doesn't have the resources to come back. Yeah. Um, he just pushes the pendulum too far one way. Yeah. So Burton ha has kind of fallen in behind this crate uh, to get some a little bit of uh, protection uh, from that. He is also touching this objective here at the bottom as well with the big boy, and he's and he's just got to you know clench his butt and hope for the best. Hope that uh, whatever shots go into him, he manages to make some saves. Yeah, he's, he's trying to get real close in there, right? Like, just get himself safe. And as you can see on the right-hand side, you can see him all protected there. Uh, some nice angles of fire that kind of... Um, I always like the top-down because I think it just gives you a really nice kind of, like, clear indication of those yeah. angles. Um, but just looking at it, you can see where he's hidden there. Um, and I think maybe he would struggle to... Like, it's going to be struggle to get, get at him? Um, yeah, like... I don't, I don't think the lines of fire are there for literally every war dog to get in at him. Um... But he also, like, Ian also wants to have something to deal with the middle here. So a Thermal Spear just hit the Big Knight and did six wounds. That's uh, a good start. That's, that's a, a good, real good start That's a for good Ian. start. No one's going to complain about that. No. Let's, should we listen in? Let's listen in. So yeah, let's do that. One, two, three. Oh, some quiet. They're gone. Oh. I think we They're can gone. hear it. They're just not Five talking. Folks. They're, just <laughs> They're just not talking. Yeah. They don't want to talk. Uh, no, they one. are. Oh, hold on one second. You guys will be able to hear yeah, it in input moments. Uh, there we go. Five ups. Uh, four ups and vulnerables, yeah. One more goes through. 
Uh, Just stubber. one damage? Yeah. Uh, stubber. Feel no pain. One more goes there. Stubber. <laughs> Fives. One from the stubber. Uh, no, one from no, the stubber no, is no, embarrassing. No, it. When you get one stubber shot going oh, yeah. into a big night, that's, that's rough. One out of how many? One out of uh. a lot. <laughs> Rinse and repeat. Burton's not too happy that the first war dog put hits. seven wounds onto him. It's a good uh, start. We roll a wound. Two on vol saves. Ah, one goes through. Five. Four, five, six. Another, another th th for five. Uh, five damage goals, from another thermal spear. That's one. rough as hell. That's a and no sixes on his feel no pain. One, two, oh, he got one three, six. So four, five, but we go. Now, one, do, two, did he already use the stand-up stratagem four, on, the, on his previous hit. night? Is a good question. Jesus. Sorry, man. Can he now make I feel this one bad. stand up if it dies? Don't feel bad. This is what you do. Five. We want stuff to die. Wow, that was good. You, you, uh, so uh, we'll, uh, you know the game, Pete, is going badly when one of the players is like, I'm at the apology stage now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, Ian, a, uh, yeah, I'm at the apology Ian stage. Ian is straight up apologizing for every role he makes. Yeah, he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bud, because this, this is a toughie. This is, this is, uh, going, this is going rough, I'm going to say. Because um, if this Crusader goes down, so right at the very bottom uh, of the board, yeah. you can see it's the Crusader, which is kind of the linchpin of what's holding Burton together here. I mean, even if he doesn't kill him, like, I mean, if he kills if he, him, obviously that's fantastic. If he bottom like, brackets him, it's still bad news. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, he's putting in a good portion of that damage right now. Uh, and you can see he's measuring to see what else is in line. And he's still got, I feel like he's got a lot of resources still to throw in there. Oh, yeah. Now, this guy's out of range, but he's just going to start targeting those guys in the middle, which is just exactly what he wants anyway. Um, but Burton really wanted to be able to make a couple of those saves. He needed uh, to only lose three or four wounds to that first couple nights of shooting instead of you know being halved he's down to i believe 12 at this point on that guy um imperial knights chaos knights pete in this in this uh in this battle pack at the moment as everything uh, in nephilim how are they doing like what's the kind of consensus because we know that they're uh, the meta here at capital city bloodbath there we do have a lot of we knights here a lot here. of knights canadians love knights because it's less work um and when it gets really cold we can hold them in bed at night <laughs> um <laughs> That's what I used to do anyway with mine. Um, but anyway, um, so far in the meta, they're doing okay. They're, they're about a roughly 50 percentile army okay, on both sides. Okay, in the sides. perfect spot. Um, we have seen a couple performances by Chaos Knights with Abaddon. We haven't really seen any pure Chaos Knights do amazing yet. Oh, so it's been a CP on Transhuman uh, on, on the, on big, the, boy, on the uh, big Night. Yeah, it must be. To try and because there's going to be probably three or four. Although more obviously it won't be actually in. transhuman, it will be a Tra trans, trans robot. Yeah, transhuman in adjacent. Transhuman adjacent. Yeah. Um, every time I watch Imperial Knights right now, I I read the book Kingmaker, which just came out. Fantastic. Oh, another another six thermal spear, another six damage. So just just to be super clear right now, uh, um, <laughs> uh, Ian has fired three thermal thermal, Thur three thermal spears, thermal spears, and done seventeen or sixteen damage so far. Seven. Well, he's he's he's. He's pinged 17, but he's yeah. done one six up, feel no pain. So like, so Okay, so that was on the middle night, so we're good. They're oh, okay. Less, well, not, not good. I not mean, good. he's still rolling hot as hell. Yeah. Oh, like, uh, he's rolling so well. Spermal tears. Yeah, know. that's what I said. Yeah, he's doing <laughs> thermal spears. So yeah. why don't we cut for just a second, because the Blood Angel combat was happening against oh, the orcs. Oh, of course. Let's, we, see, of course. let's see what, what they were able to clear. So it looks like the middle fight. So... I, Okay, so just on the previous table, the Night Crusader had nine wins left. Okay, so over table one, let's catch you up with what happened. Or, uh, so the Blood Angels moved into the mid-board, uh, kind of into that center square, and on the far left-hand side, two big units of Sanguinary Guard, 20 Death Company in the middle. They got shot to pieces in turn one by the Orcs, 20 Sanguinary... Sorry, the... Uh, Death Company, Death Company lost 19. There's one remaining with a Thunder Hammer. Sanguary Guard went a uh, unit of seven down to a unit of one. There's other one unit of seven, which is now in the center, fighting all of those orcs, as you can see. Uh, the Waz Bombs are still alive, although we might still be in combat in the top left-hand corner. I believe so, because there's Dante in there. There's a Sanguinary Priest and one Sanguinary Guard. Uh, um, so we're still in the Blood Angel combat phase like now. It looks like one of the Snaz Wagons, or whatever they call them, has been dropped. Uh, or Custom Booster Blasters has been killed by the Death Company. Um, and it looks like this unit of bikes that was over here with the Sanguinary Guard has been removed. And yeah, they, so the orc bikes have gone down. And they have tagged, uh, no doubt, probably kind of tagged through the wall, this Bone Breaker. 
um, to kind of keep it from being able to move wherever it wants. And also from it being able to charge, because yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty decent on the charge, exactly. the Bone Breaker. Um, so that's a, an Orc buggy as well. Well, well, it's an Orc truck, really. Uh, well, not an Orc truck, because that's actually a thing. Like an Orc mega truck. So it looks like the clapback from the... Um oh, sorry. No problem. No, so sorry. From the Daka Jets has picked up one uh, Sanguinary Guard. Uh, do we know if any wounds have been put on the Waz Bomb yet, or if they're still going? Was this an interrupt by Will? It's possible he interrupted to try and, and clear out a, uh, a sanguinary guard or not. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of nice pinning that you can see. There's, there's two yes. bikes in the center, uh, although one has just been lifted, uh, grabbing that unit. Uh, the sanguinary guard at the bottom have also engaged in that unit uh, of uh, buggies as well. So that's really nice because lots, lots of the output belonging to the orcs has now been tied up in some way. So it's going to have to fall back. So it looks like the Blood Angels really whiffed hard on this cl close combat. Um, I'm being told they only picked up one Daka Jet with the seven Sanguinary Guard, lost one or two in return. He lost the last remaining Death Company to this uh, to this Booster Blaster, and they only the, between Dante, um, the Sanguinary Guard, and the Sanguinary Priest, they were only able to put six wounds on this Waz Bomb. That is really rough because he's going to want to take those planes in the top left-hand corner and he's going to push it into the bottom right-hand sanguinary guard, right? Then I feel like everything else he's got can deal with those sanguinary guard in the center. Yeah. And then, uh, I, does he have a great board position? Oh, I uh, think he's fine. You think he's in a good spot? I, I think the orcs are in a very good spot. Interesting. Very interesting. Like, uh, I think, okay. All right. I'll, I'll take that. I feel like, I feel like he's close, though. Like, I mean, I, I would love to be wrong because I'm, no, I'm a too. big Blood Angel stan. I'm also an Orc stan. I do own both armies. Uh, but, man, uh, Maxim really needed to at least clear out these um, the Booster Blasters. Having even one remain, that was, is not is It's not interesting as well because with Armour of Contempt, there's not tons of AP in an Orc army. That's generally the issue with the Orc army. Now, yeah, and like Speedwog uh, was already called turn one. So uh, Will is going to lose AP as time goes by, as that speed wog runs out and the AP drops, uh, that, that bonus AP goes away. Um, but I think he did j more than enough damage that turn one. P picking up 20 Death Company uh, f with so little resources used was just massive. Like, Maxim really needed to take advantage of that first turn and, and, and clear some stuff out. Now, it's possible that he... he um, it's also possible that he uh, deployed very defensively, um, and that's why he didn't bother with the Death Company trick, but... Man, what a game. Uh, and the Knights, let's see how that big boy Knight's doing. Last we heard, he was down to six wounds. Uh, so six oh, wounds. Uh, six nope, wounds. Not uh, anymore. He's down to zero. Yeah, he is down to zero. Yes, yes. He is dead. The big Knight. So those Thermal Spears, I think Ian unable to roll anything under a five. For damage. For, yeah. for damage on those Thermal Spears has lifted him off. And this is a pretty devastating. So he's got two Armagers belonging to Imperial Knights still in the center. And then there's two Armagers on the far right-hand side. So we've got four. No, and then a fifth one on the left. So, so we've, got five we've got five Armagers left. Uh, for versus nine war for dogs. Team good guy. Yeah, for team good guy. And and eight or nine war dogs left for team bad guy, and team bad guy eh, pretty pretty solid right now. And we're about to see I think another uh, another armager picked up in the middle here. Oh no, it just took a couple wounds. Yeah, so like uh, like uh, the war dog shooting has been genuinely very impressive. Those is thermal spears have been doing massive damage. Like, is there much difference between them and the armagers, like in loadouts? Like, no, not really, not at all. Interesting. He's just rolled very well, I guess. And like getting through that ion bulwark on the um, on the warlord, the one he killed turn one, massive. Like, I would really love to see how those dice rolls went for both those guys because it can't have been good. Well, handily, P, uh, the entire game is actually uh, recorded uh, in full. So not only are we bringing in the games, but the entire oh, oh. Oh, oh, disaster. Yeah, uh, just violence now being performed by Ian. He's so angry that he's doing so well yeah. that he decided to destroy both his model and the terrain. <laughs> and the terrain. Yeah, the, uh, the, all of the games are going to be recorded in full, so you can listen back to them in, in the future, and we will upload them. Uh, if you're interested, to see, uh, just hear someone go, another six? You rolled another yeah. six. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely what we're going to hear, I think. Uh, let's tune into the players right now and uh, see how they're, what they're saying As about say this matchup. As you say that, he rolls another six. <laughs> I have five attacks hitting on twos. Uh, strength is 12, threes to one. Uh, it is AP minus three. 
So I got sixes? Yeah. Nope. And it's D3 plus 3 damage. Ooh. Uh, so 6, 12, 13, 14 damage. He's dead. Does he blow up? No. That is another, as we heard, 14 damage. Another armager dead? Mm-hmm. Crazy. It's not good. It's not good. So now we're, now we're nine war dogs, four armagers. Yep. This is, uh, this is a toughie. Although I think that armager in the middle may get to swing into the war dog, so we maybe can pull the points back around. He can at least take that. He might be able to keep that middle objective, depending on what happens here. Um, this is I a close a combat turn, I... uh, armager that's hanging out here. He's brought, like he could come up and and do some work on <laughs> and this they objective. Get, and they get and get withered. And like, they get destroyed. Like right chat, away, yeah. don't not worry. We absolutely think that this is a huge blowout. We just talked about this a moment ago. Um, like this is absolutely dominant for the Chaos Knights. Yeah. And honestly, very interesting to see. I quite like. I like the all armager, all war dog build. I yeah. think, that, I oh, think you've got a amazing. lot of tools. It is. Um, and I think it's quite fun. Probably plays really badly in some matchups. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where, like, Abaddon or, um, like, having, like, a, a, a back uh, a backstop feature on top of your war dogs kind of comes in handy with some of these lists. But as we've seen with the way Ian's been playing, sometimes, you know, thermal spears will just kill everything. Yes. <laughs> literally kill everything. Like Nigel Matthews said in the chat, these don't do it at home though. This is a this no. is a, this is a special outing performance. Maybe they just know that they're um, maybe they know that they're on stream and they're like, okay, it's, it's time for time to perform. Yeah, absolutely. Time, time yeah, perform. exactly. They they're they're the porn stars um, of Ian's collection for sure. Yeah. <laughs> they know when to perform. Only only when they're given the opportunity. Only to when on camera. Yeah, are they are they doing so? All right, so let's just jump back to table one right now. Um, uh, let's jump to table one and let's have a look at uh, how this game is unpacked. So we are now into Orcs turn two. <laughs> that is oh, it. Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so I bad. don't enjoy what's happened. Uh, turn one very quickly just to catch you up with what happened. First turn was taken by Blood Angels. Units moved into the top left-hand corner. Uh, they moved the Death Company into the center. Orcs returned by killing 19 Death Company. A bunch of Sangre Guard in the left. Uh, then the Blood Angels in their turn two, they tried to deal with it. They killed like three of the buggies that we saw in the center. But more importantly, in my opinion, they killed uh, the unit of bikes on the far right hand side giving yes. themselves an option now we've just seen the move and oh my goodness they are about to unload there's only four sangry guard left in the center of the seven that had gone in so there's yeah. there's one at the top left along with uh, the sanguinor uh, no dante and a sanguinary priest okay which uh, uh, i believe um will has just it just been like i don't care about them anymore no <laughs> like, you can just be there at the yeah, top and do what you exist. need uh, um yeah so it's not good. Like, these Sanguinary Guard are in trouble. These Sanguinary Guard are in a lot of trouble. Um, this is not good for... Maxim really needed to pick up probably two or more buggies than he did. Um, and he really needed to bracket that Waz Bomb, and he didn't even do that. So it's, it's bad news all around for Maxim. He's got the lead on points currently, but like that's going to quickly change here because the death cop death copters are coming in from. We're about to go into a withering shooting phase for the orcs. If anything, uh, if anything, the last turn was to go by, but we're about to go in the field right now for a withering interview with Mr. Val Heffelfinger. Here we go. You're live. Val Heffelfinger here in the field. Exclamation point! Other games. If you want to track what I'm tracking and explain it to me. And who better to explain stuff to me than the coach of Canada himself, Jeremy Atkinson, or as we say, Cooch uh, of, uh, of Canada. Uh, so uh, how's, how's the event been going for you so far? It's pretty good so far. Won my first two games pretty handily. Uh, just I'm here to have fun. I'm enjoying myself so far. And that's, it's about your fun, too. Like, uh, like I'm noticing there's a lot of time left in the round, and you're just wandering around aimlessly. I was wandering around aimlessly. Why, why is it that you had some free time? Uh, I showed no mercy in that last game. <laughs> so what are you playing? Uh, I'm playing Imperial Knights, Tyrannus, uh, seven little Armagers, and two big uh, Questorus class knights. So the little guys, tell me about them. What are they, what are they doing? Because what, what were you up against in this particular round? Uh, so I was playing against Space Marines, specifically Death Watch. Uh, that was the Army of Renown, so he has a bunch of neat tricks for auto-wounding and teleporting around the map. Uh, so the Armigers, the little, the little guys, they're there as my shield, as, my, as, as kind of my front screen to keep the two big knights safe. 
Um, they get buffed up by the big knights so that they're minus one damage, so that they are nice and tanky, uh, and they just go about killing around, killing whatever comes near them. Now you wound up uh, on this one, 98 to 50. Uh, so that's you know that's that's, that's got to be good. What what happened in the game? How, why was it so lopsided? Uh, so there were two things that happened. The first one, so he went first, but he didn't have a lot of shooting. He was a more melee focused, uh, short range, so he wasn't able to come into me do very much damage. Uh, but what ended up happening as a result of that was uh, he advanced up a unit, and probably his most scary unit, to within range where I could shoot with my entire army. And then could also charge it afterwards. So a big 10-man brick of three wound T5 Gravis Marines vaporized. You don't want to see that. No, he, he, he was very unimpressed at the end of that. Uh, and then on turn two, I, uh, I did a magic trick and made another 10 Gravis Marines disappear. And he said, uh, I'm going to go for lunch. Yeah. I think I owe him a beer at this point. I think the bar's open now, so I should probably go buy him that. <laughs> well, we'll have to look into the status of the bar. Uh, I love lots of nights in the meta because there's people standing around that I can talk to. Uh, with that said, though, I think it's time to go back to the booth, to the Falcon, and... Thank you very much, and we're back. Uh, so this is our exciting game between Blood Angels. Thanks to Val and Tom uh, doing great work, and Rich, our table boss, uh, can't stop thanking them all enough for so doing great work. Back to table work. one. Uh, back, yeah, to table back one. on table one. Back on table one. Back to violence. Yeah, back to the violence. So uh, off air, uh, the table boss, Rich, uh, he turned up, and he was like, I don't know if you've noticed, but he also has got a bunch of death copters, which we did not know about. And they we, are also... We knew about them. We thought they were somewhere else. Well, they I didn't out. know about them. They I were in Deep Strike. Yeah, and, and I was like, oh, no, because he already killed a lot of stuff with the guns last time, yeah. and now he's doing some now additional guns. More guns. More guns, which is a shame. So uh, this is going to be a super, super tough uh, match uh, for Maxime to come back from, I think, because look well, at... Look at the board presence. One thing I'll say is I generally try not to call a game early because I've done it in the past and it's bit me in the butt. I know. like calling games early. I'm like, I'll get it wrong. Let's see how it's going. But, you know, uh, ah, this is tough. I mean, we've already seen one unit of Sanguinary Guard deleted, which we knew was going to happen. Um, but this, I mean, but this he's one is lighter already. This, these uh, assault uh, inter intercessors just don't exist anymore, guys. Just pretend they're not there. Yeah. Um, So that's, yeah, look, we're picking up more Sanguinary Guard. Like, guys, I'm sorry, this game is super over. Uh, I really feel like Blood Angels needed to be so much more aggressive that turn one. Because uh, if they could have gotten Death Company into the lines, killed a, a squad of, um, like, those custom booster blasters, would have made such a big difference, or, sh or the three shock jumps. Um, playing as, uh, as, like, laid back as he did, kind of hide in the middle, it was... Table rough. two said they're making it look good for the stream. Okay. Oh, okay. Let's cut to table two. Let's look at table two. Oh, the remaining armagers have come into play. He's okay. he, instead of coming up here and trying to deal with these two, he said, F it. I'm coming in the middle. We're going to make the plays. We're going to clear everything off. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's gotten very aggressive. So this is an armager match. Uh, well, it, was, it wasn't initially. Uh, this is a bunch of war dogs belonging to the Chaos Knights. Started out 14 belonging to Ian and his Chaos Knights. However, then Burton um, uh, had his Imperial Knights, but he lost his Crusader turn one. His Warlord, with, with Ion Bulwark, so he had a 4-plus invuln. He had the possibility of, of resing it on a 4-plus with a stratagem. Failed the 4-plus, uh, so it didn't come back to life. He's just living his worst possible life on, um, as far as we've been told by the table boss, four thermal spears uh, did 20 some odd damage to that warlord uh, alone. Uh, wow. So he was already on three wounds with nothing la with, uh, off the, the first four shots he took. Um, so yeah, it's been a bad scene for Burton here. Um, feel bad for the, the guy. Look at him though. He's so happy. Like you reach that point when you're losing a game that badly where you go from sadness to bliss because you've just accepted fate. Yes, yeah, I mean, he kind of has to accept it, right? This yeah. is... Yeah. And it's gorgeous. It is a gorgeous army to look at. Yeah, it does look really nice. I think our roaming camera is getting us some nice... Look oh, at those guys. my oh. goodness. Look at that warlord. He's so Hello. Beautiful. I wouldn't mind him dying if he looked that good all the time. Well, that's... I mean, like... I'm like, he gets to go back on... Like, if I was that guy... that model. Yeah, I want, I want him to just go back on there. I'm like, I hate him being on this table. <laughs> I want him... The glowy lights. Tom's impressed by the glowy lights. Love yeah. that. Like, he loves that. That's the glowy great. lights took the, the uh, resolution right out of the shot, too. Yeah, I think it's... 
it's just expect. it's just the the auto focus we're gonna get yeah. yeah there you go there we go that's what it's about um i mean i mean just absolutely amazing stunning stuff oh yeah um, we're gonna try and get some shots of the best painting when they get laid out later on uh and for you guys so i'll create some b-roll for that so and you burton guys is always in the running for best painted i mean it has to be knows. surely oh for sure it like, has yeah. to be he has to be the custom jobs he's done with the lances on his armatures it's great so can we let's go back to the top down Oh, it looks like he, uh, somehow Burton lost the model and not Ian <laughs> in, a, in a 2v1 fight. Burton is just like, this is not This is just how life is now. This Imperial, is my life. Imperial Knights really just need to go over to the Chaos side, it does seem yeah. at this point. Yeah. That's pretty tough. Um, yeah, this is, this is looking very dominant on both. And we've got an hour left on the round. I might, we might, with these games still in swing, I might take you for an Age of Sigmar adventure out in the field. I got the opportunity to do that. I could go out into the field and uh, tell everyone what's happening in the Age of Sigmar tournament. That would be a fun little addition. Uh, we could do that. I mean, I, we could go with the camera. I could just go over. Like, Rob is mind. so excited about Age of Sigmar, guys. And but, I mean, these games are over. These games are 100% over. We're just watching a massacre now. We, yeah, we're watching 100 p 100 p So I might, I might, don't, in fact, I'll trade. We'll trade. Yeah. We could do that. Yeah, yeah. You know what to Take do with the, the You know what to do with the buttons. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no problem. No, no problem. I We're going to just listen to these players have a great game, and we'll be back in one minute, chat. Two, four, two, four, six. So this is actually at 12 now. One, yeah. So start my turn. I'll hold more, which is 12. Yep. Um, um, uh, we're locked in combat. You get some jank that you don't like me being in your deployment zone. I don't think it's gonna really matter at this point. You can just uh, kill me by shooting. So in the, in the uh, <laughs> I'm gonna be a dick. I'm sorry. Uh, command uh, point. In the command phase, I get a D3 ones back. Woo. So three wow. puts him back up. Uh, in the command phase, I'm actually gonna take the D3 damage and move him uh, an extra three inches. So he takes two damage, but makes him move uh, 14. And he takes, what did I say, two damage? up against Arkan, so that means the OCR Bone Reapers have already lost. That was an army selection, interestingly, uh, before they even got in. Uh, lovely. Haven't heard French played since Worlds, uh, like uh, in Age of Sigma. That's great. So over on this table, we've got two legends, actually. Bulldog Wargaming. Fist bump. Let's go. Uh, there we go. Against my very good friend, Ollie. There we go. Uh, Ollie, how are you doing in your match? I'm good. I think I'm winning. You think you're winning? Depends on priority. Oh, a classic. How do you feel about the match? Uh, I think he's winning. Depends on priority. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely excellent. Okay, good. That looks like some... Ah, the Skaven are out. Okay, brilliant. Uh, so Ollie's actually uh, one of my very good personal friends. We play Warhammer all the time. One of my other very good personal friends is Francois. Hey, Hello, how are you doing? We're live on the internet. Hello. How's your match going? Uh, not very good. Oh, okay. Ollie's doing fine, he says. Is he? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, like, it's, it's, uh, it's not too bad. I'm leading on points at the moment, 10 to 6, but uh, there's not much left on the on the battlefield, and I think my Star Drake is about to uh, bite the uh, dust. No, the skull root is horrible. The skull root, that's that's so bad. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Well, no. the worst is, like, the, like, this dude's spell where, like, you, you, you cast, and on the, on the fight, you, like, you roll your... War song bomb. Yeah. But, but it goes everywhere. Like he's wiped like pretty much uh, all my heroes that way. 
Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Well, it's lovely talking to you both. Good luck with your game. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. So, pretty exciting matches. Uh, let's keep going. We've got, we got loads. We can, we've got loads to talk about. What have we got going on? Uh, there's some pretty famous people. There's, there's some Season of War players over here. Uh, let's see. Uh, hi, hi. Um, loads of really exciting matches. We've got Carriage and Overlords, Fist Bump. How's your match going? Tell us what's happening. Uh, I'm doing quite well. Oh, you're doing really well? Yeah. Okay, what are you playing as? Uh, Skaven, Scryer. Oh, wow. You've got a boat, though. You're fine. That's all that's left. How, do you mind if I interview you? How's your match going? Not great. Uh, Go Trick died turn one. and What two? Rats. So many rats. They just shoot a lot. <laughs> that's horrible. Like, just, um, I, if, I don't know. What's your plan? Get a couple points before this is all over. That's a good plan. Call it a day. That's a good plan. Get a beer. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Well, good luck with your match. You can. That's that's that looks bad. That's that's rough. Uh, we've got an exciting match here. You've got the famous Jordan from that's Season good. of War. Sorry to disturb your game. How's your game going? Uh, good. Well, right now, uh, Kratos is fighting an incarnate, and I have 40 Reavers trying to pick him down. So you're going to try and bring down the Kratos with the shots? Well, I have to. Well, unless the incarnate can do it. Oh, okay. Oh, so the incarnate's yours as well? The incarnate's mine, yeah. yeah. Oh, so. dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> there's, a, there's a scared face on his opponent. And that looks like there's some Gargants playing here at the event. I think it's the only Gargants match that we've seen. Uh, so it's looking pretty fun. Um, Age Sigmar's in a really interesting place right now. There's no armies above the 55% win rate, which is pretty exciting. Um, oh, uh, yeah, there's no, not many armies above 55%. So it's a pretty open field. I think there's 44 players here in Canada. There's a big French uh, representation. I know Quebec City tends to have a lot of big Age Sigmar events in French, which is really fun. And so that's everything. There's a purple sun. That's all we need. Welcome to Age of Sigmar. Uh, so I'm just going to go back over to the booth now, to the guys. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy this little quick wander through. Uh, thanks very much, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon. There we go, when we're back. We're back. <laughs> Absolutely great work. Yeah, we got this. Uh, <laughs> solid work. Me and Val Helfelfinger. Just, just the two of us. Yeah, just the two of us. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, Rob, how was it walking? I mean, running back was... It's, this is such a huge venue. It's large. It's, it's big. It's, 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 it's in charge. <laughs> it's ready to rock. It's ready to rock. Okay, so the, the final moments of these of these matches, unfortunately. Uh, well, uh, we, we've got some, some real handsome gents. I'm, I'm going to be looking forward to talking to them. So that, uh, that will come in handy. If okay. They, they, it's hard to talk. Although I liked how you just interrupted people in a, present, fle uh, in a uh, pleasant and friendly manner. Oh, yeah. The agency my community is very used to me just getting in their face at this stage. If I were to try that on these 40K rows... Might be some arms uh, being no, barred. I think you'd be fine. Might be I some think hands be being I think, tossed. I think you'd be, you'd be surprised about how much people really want to be like, I'm doing quite well, or I'm not. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I, I, I'm going to be a little more bold. Maybe in chat, tell me. Should I be more bold? Should I just be just, I think just it, bullying I think people into talking to me? Yeah, you should. You should. We did it at Worlds. They were not happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and, yeah. Uh, like, and we continue to do that. Well, like, at some point, you've got to put the stream first. <laughs> every time. That's, that's how I feel about it. All right, so catch everyone up. Uh, there's been some pretty exciting matches going on, Val. Uh, we've had two matches. Table one, uh, it's been pretty interesting. We've had Maxime versus Will. Maxime uh, made a kind of bold choice turn one, put in a load of units in the center and left-hand side. The Orcs then dominated in the shooting phase. Uh, then the Blood Angels tried to come back, do some fighting. They managed to kill a couple of buggies. And then all of the Orcs unloaded on all of the other Blood Angels. And now I think... There's just maybe Dante left in the top left-hand corner because you can see the Sangrum Guard on the right-hand side. If you wanted guard. one guy in your corner, Dante you, maybe? Yeah, you, you'd want Dante. Yeah, you'd probably want him. Uh, yeah, I okay. was going to say. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to make a bold claim and Go officially ahead. call this for, for, the, for the Blood Angel. No, I'm joking. This is an Orcs game. It's an Orcs game. Orcs have got it in the bag, which as 
There's two Orc players. The two Orc players, that's correct. There's two Orc players. We're fans. And I'd say that this game state is, is one that even you and I can read. <laughs> yeah, it's over. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's over, ladies and gentlemen. It's, uh, it's an over. Uh, and and, you, and then, go, go ahead. Go and then going to table two, we had the War Dogs. Yes. Yeah, we had the... Dogs the, of War. Yeah, the Furiosa, um, Mad Max, Thunder Road, um, uh, Hell in a Cell sort of situation uh, with a bunch of... Imperial Knights, a bunch of Imperial Knights at the bottom. The Imperial Knights did okay. They went up and they killed two War Dogs on the first turn. In the first turn, though, for the, for the War Dogs and the Chaos Knights, they killed the big Warlord Knight Crusader, which Not is pretty good. tough. And they also killed an Armager. Then the Slapback, we lost another three War Dogs uh, for uh, when the Imperial Knights had their turn. Then the Chaos Knights, they slapped back and they murdered the next Knight Crusader. And then it just went downhill from there. And now I think we've got two Armagers versus six war dogs maybe seven war dogs so again um as much as i think burton is going to try and put some points on the board uh, mm -hmm. he's just hoping that that painting competition has got some good prizes at this stage yeah and also i'd say he's going to do pretty well in the uh bikini contest later <laughs> okay good. You know. he, he may he may do pretty well at that so yeah those are our matches i think that's pretty much it i think i think even trying to get some interviews i think it, we might uh it might take too long uh, gotcha. between then and now. Yes. So I think uh, those games are called. We, let's take a moment. Let's listen to how the players are enjoying their match. And I'll charge you. It's good. And four attacks. One hit. I'll pile in. Sure. No damage. Brutal. I'll start off with my little guy, four attacks. One wound from my little punk, and uh, no AP. Stops it. Oh, nothing. A beginning of my turn. Uh, nope. I need to. Oh yeah. What do, what do you get I for didn't gain or lose any? I. Uh, didn't destroy anything, so I actually should lose one. Do I lose one on a five up? I do not. Uh, I think that's it. So I yielded no ground. So is that another three? I fell back, so it doesn't count. But nobody's in my deployment still. Maybe this guy? Uh, 10 inches. Is it wholly within or? Uh, even at 10, he's not in. Okay. So I get one point there. One point in yield. Uh, I didn't renew the oaths. Uh, I didn't kill any more guys. So I think that's. Uh, so start of my turn. Start of your turn. I get 12. Yeah. Uh, so I'm wrapping up the scoring for the end of that turn. For that. Pete, what do you think? Three for that. Well, I'm going to move that. Ian somehow only on 36 points. Layer. I believe they're just not uh, updating us anymore because they know it's a massacre. Ian here just so apologetic. Burton loving it, uh, loving every minute of it. <laughs> um, we're now looking at what seven? Yeah, seven war dogs to two armagers yeah, remaining. Yeah, it's looking really tough. Um, and like moving into turn four, I really feel like uh, it's anybody's game. <laughs> it could be anyone's. We, I like how we chose two blowouts. We did. Not just one. We did. This is not just two blowouts. But I don't mind a blowout. I think they're really exciting. I do love a blowout. Um, the two blow. I didn't feel like both would be blowouts. But the the Blood Angels losing that many Death Company uh, to three models was a, was a bit unexpected. Okay, so let's, let's, before we go to our infield report, let's quickly just talk through it. Blood Angels, do we think that there was a mistake that got made? Do you I think we could have seen a different game? I feel we could have seen a different game. Now... You know, we'd have to cut back to the footage to double check. Mm. Blood Angels have this ability where a unit of Death Company can pre-game move 12 inches mm -hmm. and then, you know, move again. So um, oftentimes, and you, like, you go first, you say, okay, uh, you say, okay I'm going to move my Death Company up 12 inches. I'm going to chain them back so that one of them is within range of Dante. Then you say, okay, my first, uh, my command phase, Dante's going to give full rerolls to this. And with a 10-man squad, it's even easier because you can chain them the full 12 inches up like this without any worry. They move 12 inches again. They're now four or five inches away from the front line of the, of the orcs, if not, if not closer. And then you say, okay, I'm just going to make this very simple charge and destroy your life. Mm. Um, 
And, like, to me, that's kind of like the gimme play in this matchup. That being said, uh, we'd have to go back and look at how Maxim deployed. Maybe he deployed very defensively, thinking he was going to go second. Um, there's a lot there to unpack. Uh, the, the very kind of um, casual way he, dr he dropped the drop pod here in the middle and tried to hide behind the wall rather than also kind of bringing them up and, and causing grief to, to Will, another interesting play. It's something I'd love to hear from him, like how he planned that turn one out to be the way it did, like why he made the decisions he did. Um, because, like, it was just devastating. And, yes, Will's roles were hot. Maxim's were not when they needed to be. Uh, but, like, Maxim just has Dante, a Sanguinary Priest, and uh, five Incursors left. Mm. Uh, so this game is 100% is over. Okay. Well, with both games, with both games over, uh, we're going to go to our man in the field, Mr. Val Heffelfinger, uh, and he's going to let us know what's been happening at the rest of the tournament. Yes, that's right. I'm going to tell you what's happening in the entire tournament. Over here to my right, we're, we're, we're witnessing the wrap-up of uh, the lone wolf in the field. Connor, he uh, just wrapped up his game. Down 72-71. A real tight slobber knocker. Connor, just a quick comment. How, uh, what did you think of the game? I think it was 80% Abaddon's fault that I lost. So we'll, uh, we'll give him the MVP for sure. You know, uh, you got to admit, it's nice that his number's finally coming up. You know, the poor guy, he's been... I liked him myself. I've personally always thought that he's like the least fun Chaos character. And the other guys are getting shafted, you know? Like, how about, like, here on Blackheart with the hand flamer thing? He's always been a personal favorite with the little buddy that casts psychic powers. Absolutely. Like, and now you've played Mortarion. You got Abaddon. Like Two more rounds. I Who's like Mortarion. As a, as a Death Guard player, I do like Mortarion a lot. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what happens next. The chat is fired up. Okay, we're going to keep going. Over here, we're noticing the Gargantuan Squigeth is dead. Uh, Josh, how's the game going? Uh, it is not going well. Tyrions are very nasty still. Tyranids are nasty, you heard it here first, especially when you bring a list that has a gargantuan squigoth in it. So let's keep going this way. Uh, working down the aisle, I spy with my little eye something that is Max Dubois. Max Dubois, how you doing, my friend? H how are things going, Hellfire Painting? I, it's Hellfire Hobbies, but uh, thank you. Uh, I hate knives, man. But, like, Brett's, Brett's being a gentleman, and he's letting me succeed everything I'm trying. So, you know. But now, uh, is it true that you're being a gentleman? Absolutely. There's no other way to do it. I'm very, I'm very happy to hear that. Guys, continue on with your game. Thanks for stopping by with me. Now, as always, a good friend of mine, Dustin Henshaw, just sort of standing alone, because uh, he stands alone. Dustin, Dustin how, did, uh, how did it go this round? Well, the cheese stands alone. Oh, sorry. He's, he's verklempt. He's verklempt. My own, my own joy here. No, it went well. I bought some custodes, like 15, 18 bikes, but only a couple of hurricane bolters, so my uh, swarm of neophytes managed to shred them down. <laughs> you love the neophytes because they're new, and they're just working to try and impress, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That's all they want to do. They Plus one to wound, strike six, negative two, two damage, nothing to snuff at, man. I mean, that's, that's good. Right? I'm not snuffing. You never snuff. You never snuff, Al. I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Good work, Dustin. I, uh, maybe we'll see you soon. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll see more of Dustin uh, if, as we continue down uh, the the row here. Ron, it's going well. We got we got a camera. How's, how's the game going for you? It's fun. This guy's awesome. I love getting smoked. <laughs> <laughs> Loves getting smoked. It's true. Uh, Alex Stewart here wrapping up. Uh, 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 how 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 Alex uh, was your round? It, it went uh, very well. I had an excellent opponent. Great game. Excellent. I'm glad to hear it. Is it true what I've heard? You're an excellent opponent. He's an even better opponent, so it's not fair. You know, they say that there's no love at Warhammer tournaments. And I just want to point out here that people, when they're on camera, pretend to really like one another. And I think that's the key. You want to have more cameras at Warhammer tournaments so people are nicer to one another. Hamza looks like he's working on something. Tim doing math. Always dangerous. Tim? Uh, I know you suffered uh, a bit of a head injury in, in, in Europe for Team Canada. I did. Um, how'd this round go for you, though? Good. Uh, got really aggressive, and uh, in the Eldar matchup, I have to, but uh, he couldn't answer me, so it went downhill from there for him. Well, um, I guess that, that's how it went, huh? It's okay. 
It's okay. It's okay. See, the camera does it, does does the work for us. It just keeps us civil. Let's go over this way. Uh, Mr. Eric. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, we'll do one last wrap up here. Uh, now you brought the nights out when we played together uh, in Europe. Uh, you were running the nights, were you not? Yes. So how does it feel to have them back on the table? Oh, uh, it's really good. It, it like it's just an army so like easy to play but it just feels good to play it's no model count so it's just really fun i love it i don't understand why i don't play nights i feel like i feel like that's my jam just a couple big boys hang out have a nice time uh thanks uh, thanks for your comments we'll we'll have to tune in later how's it, is it going going well here sadly for him it's not like it's going well for me <laughs> but your opponent has a much nicer shirt and that and that is how you win <laughs> in life so I think, I think that gets to the end of the row. Um, I might, might grab a table, reserve it for me and my friends to eat lunch at. Speaking of which, if anyone would like to eat lunch with me, I might grab a table there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little amble around the uh, convention hall, and we will be sure to bring you lots more scintillating interviews. I think I said those words right later on today. But for now, we're going back to the booth to our friends. <laughs> Rob Stein. <laughs> hello. The other guy's the falcon of all people. So, hello, Kaka. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, thanks to Val and Tom for bringing us the Imperial Report. In. And also a massive thank you to Rich for being an excellent table boss. Sticky boy. Uh, yeah, doing really good work. Uh, so, uh, hello. Welcome back. Our two games are over. Blood Angels lost to Orcs, but I'm happy because I'm an Orc fan. Yeah, you are. Yeah, uh, so I don't mind that. And I, 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 and it was pretty devastating. I think a lot of dice kind of changed the shape of that game, but ultimately, like, they just got blammoed off the board. Uh, the, the, the Blood Angels needed to be a little more Blood angel -y and less whatever was going on. They there. got very bloodied. They turned they, into yeah, blood. They like, did. Yeah, they the, turned they, into they, only they, blood. They, they were Blood Angels. Yeah. Uh, and then our Chaos Knights, uh, just showing some dominant firepower versus our Imperial Knights. And Which again... Should have been the dominant firepower. Like, yeah. That should have been a game where the Chaos Knights had to take that middle and hope for the best. No. Nope. Yeah. Nope. What if what if uh, like five thermal spears killed uh, Buddy's warlord in turn one? Yeah, just off you go. Yeah, those thermal spears do incredible work. And that's it. That's it for round two. Round three, we will be back in about an hour. When I hold, do the holding screen in a minute, you'll be able to check that out uh, and you'll be able to see. Um, you can also check out all of our socials. It's going to be on the FLG Network. It's on T-Sports Network Twitch. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be on Twitter. There's loads of places to check it out. Uh, this is only round the wrap up of round two of six rounds. Two more rounds today and then two more rounds tomorrow uh, for 120 people. And I think we'll end up with probably maybe two people on 6-0. Maybe. Maybe two people on 6-0. Depends on draws, things like that, drops. Uh, one thing, guys, uh, that I haven't made clear since we started we're going to be streaming for uh, probably like 11 or 12 hours today. We're going to be a little exhausted by the end. If you want to help us out, um, if you could just door dash us literally any food. They're not feeding us here. We're at the convention We're center in Ottawa. We're at the EY center in yeah, Ottawa. Yeah, EY. Door EY. I'm not a picky per uh, This man's a vegetarian. I could eat literally anything. So just whatever you want, pop into door dash at 4899 Upland Avenue or something like that. Send us some food. Uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, Dick, Dickie is wasting away over here. <laughs> Darren walked over about five minutes ago with a bowl of ramen. I don't even know where he got it, and yeah. he just slurped it in my face. Yeah. So, so yeah, Eddie Dordash, that would be that would be great. But I hope you guys have enjoyed the coverage. Uh, Pete's been amazing. Thank you so much, uh, and thank you to the rest of the team. Uh, we'll be back for two more rounds today. Two more rounds. So we're going to go for some lunch two now. Uh, thanks very much, and see you soon. Thank you also to the players.